Cherry Log Road by James L. Dickey Off Highway 106 at Cherry Log Road, I entered the 34 Ford without wheels, smothered in kudzu, with the seat pulled out to run corn whiskey down from the hills, and then from the other side crept into an Essex with a rumble seat of red leather, and then out again, aboard a blue Chevrolet, releasing the rust from its other color. Reared up on three building blocks, none had the same body heat. I changed with them inward, toward the weedy heart of the junkyard, for I knew that Doris Holbrook would escape from her father at noon, and would come from the farm to seek parts owned by the sun among the abandoned chassis, sitting in each in turn as I did, leaning forward as in a wild stock car race in the parking lot of the dead. Time after time, I climbed in and out the other side, like an envoy or movie star met at the station by crickets. A radiator cap raised its head, become a real toad or a king snake, as I neared the hub of the yard passing through many states, many lives, to reach some grandmother's long, pierce arrow sending platters of blindness forth from its nickel hubcaps and spilling its tender upholstery on sleepy roaches, the glass panel in between lady and colored driver, not all the way broken out, the backseat phone still on its hook. I got in as though to exclaim, "'Let us go to the orphan asylum, John.' I have some old toys for children who say their prayers. I popped with sweat as I thought I heard Doris Holbrook scrape like a mouse in the southern state sun that was eating the paint and blisters from a hundred car tops and hoods. She was tapping like code, loosening the screws, carrying off headlights, spark plugs, bumpers, cracked mirrors, and gear knobs, getting ready already to go back with something to show, other than her lips new trembling, I would hold to me soon, soon, where I sat in the ripped back seat talking over the interphone, praying for Doris Holbrook to come from her father's farm, to get back there with no trace of me on her face, to be seen by her red-haired father who would change in the squalling barn her back's pale skin with a strop, then lay for me in a bootlegger's roasting car with a string-triggered 12-gauge shotgun to blast the breath from the air. Not cut by the jagged windshield through the acres of wrecks, she came with a wrench in her hand. Through dust where the black snake dies of boredom, and the beetle knows the compost has no more life. Someone outside would have seen the oldest car's door inexplicably closed from within. I held her and held her and held her, convoyed at terrific speed by the stall-dreaming traffic around us, so the black snake, stiff with inaction, curved back into life and hunted the mouse with deadly overexcitement. The beetles reclaimed their field as we clung, glued together, with the hooks of the seed springs working through to catch us red-handed, amidst the gray, breathless batting that burst from the seats at our backs. We left by separate doors into the changed other bodies of cars. She came down Cherry Log Road, and I, to my motorcycle, Parked like the soul of the junkyard, restored, a bicycle fleshed with power, and tore off up Highway 106, continually drunk on the wind in my mouth, ringing the handlebar for speed, wild to be wreckage forever.